And we're live. Hi everyone, this is Amish Gamer, and now we're returning to Civ 5 Ox Populi. And I'll be discussing more about the mods I'll be using for future playthroughs, I guess. I'm still waiting for a couple ones to be updated to be compatible with the March 14th beta patch for VP. So I haven't started any new games yet. So. I actually included a couple of mods, but there's one that's really big that for those who have watched my channel so far, you know what it is. And there are also a couple of other ones I'll add, and hopefully I don't spoil it. So the one I want to talk about today is the third and fourth unique component. So the goal of the third and fourth unique component is to, as the mod's name suggests it adds a third and fourth component to a sieve. So normally for... I haven't played enough vanilla so I can't really say. But I think VP follows the same formula with uh, vanilla. Where for a sieve you start off with a unique component, I mean unique unit. And then you have either a unique improvement or unique building. So for instance, for Morocco in VP, you will only have the Berber Cab and the Caspa. However, with third and fourth unique component, you also get another unique unit, the Corsair, and then you also get the Riyad, Riyad, I have no idea how you pronounce it. So as you can imagine, it adds a lot of diversity and changes a lot of things when you look at it. For some sieves, it really strengthens their early game. Like, for instance, Assyria is a pretty good example. I'm actually going to do Assyria for both A2Z leader and A2Z nation once all of my mods are ready. For example, it has two unique components and two unique buildings. It has a siege tower that's available at military theory. It has the iron chariot that's available at bronze working. It has the lamasu gate that's available at um, construction, and it has the royal library that's available by with writing. So by early classical era, you're gonna. I mean, depending on how you tech, you basically have access to all of this. By medieval, you will have all of this. And hopefully at that point you'll be snowballing. So like Assyria is very strong early on. Now I, I will talk about Assyria more in detail once I actually play the Civ. And of course uh, some of their... I do think some of their unique abilities got changed a bit. I mean there, there are some additional changes. But I do have to open up my browser because I don't have it memorized. I shouldn't have it memorized. I don't have time to memorize all of this. I mean, I, I try to remember as much as I can, at least the key things. So let's see. Um, the problem is they're only in spoilers, so it's kind of hard to tell. I'll have to open bit by bit because I know s some of them experience some other changes as well. To make sure they're not too broken, I mean one obvious one is for ASCII. So for VP, for VP when you have ASCII, his first unique unit, the Mendek Mendekalu Cavalry, it replaces the Horseman, but as we all know that's just stupidly broken. So here this unit is actually moved to uh, chivalry. So medieval era it replaces a knight. It's still very powerful. Don't get me wrong. It's still very powerful. But I guess you have a better chance of surviving early game if you're neighboring Askia. That's such a huge thing. So, so as you can see there are some changes that are made to certain civs. Just to make some things... You know, a bit more balanced because you gotta remember this is an extra unique unit and unique building. And is the mod balanced? Uh, not quite. Some are s quite a bit stronger. I mean, there are some issues, like for example, China. 
for the unique building, the, the model doesn't know what to add because China is already so powerful with a very underwhelming unique building. So, if, for instance, like the examination hall, it's actually very underwhelming, but China still excels. So, China is kind of broken, so it's, it's really hard to... How do I say it? it? It's very hard to balance some sieves and others. I mean, honestly, this mod just needs more players and more feedback to achieve some kind of balance that more people would be happy with. So some other changes like Byzantium has a coastal start bias because now, uh, let's see, because now Byzantium has a naval unique unit so as you can imagine without a coast it's not that strong so there are these small changes i don't think i'm gonna go through everything that'd be crazy i mean that the next one is like yeah the celts where instead of getting three faith in own city where your religion is the majority you get three faith in city after adopting pantheon and you also get great merchant points. Oh yeah, speaking of that, uh, so like the Celts is pretty unique. I I can't think of any other ones, but I haven't played all the sales, so I can't say for all of them. But the Celts have a unique improvement for, uh, which is a great merchant improvement replacement. So as you can imagine. They they want to give you a chance to get more uh, you know great merchants so you can get your unique improvement so that that is pretty cool and like I said like it really diversified things like for Alexander he has a hoplite in the ancient era and he has this cleft in um what is it uh industrial era. So instead of like having all the power spike at the you know early game, you also have a bit in the late game, and this unit is not bad. It's it's a very versatile, not not as tanky as a Gatling gun, but it adds a lot of flavor. And overall, there are lots of changes. Like for instance, I think Rome once had the ballista, and then it got removed, and now third and fourth unit component gets it. And there are also, oh yeah, there are also new resources. Like for instance, like if you look at on the description, it says on construction immediately spawns and improve figs. So from what I know of, Rome has unique uh, resource and so does Egypt. So Egypt gets flax, Rome gets figs. There might be other ones, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, there, I mean, the Incans. Incans have a unique luxury. Uh, Rome and... Rome and Egypt has a unique uh, resource, like improvable resources like a stone or something. It doesn't give you happiness, but it gives you more yields and stuff, so that's pretty nice. And overall, I mean, like... Germany normally their early game is kind of weak. I mean this doesn't necessarily make their early game that much stronger. It's only a warrior replacement. But their promotion Barbarian Alliance help you create faster alliances with city states. Which early on can make a huge deal because that could help you really snowball and such. And, and overall I mean these add a lot of things. And I mean, some things did get moved around, but overall, it adds a ton of, it adds a ton of, like, flavor and versatility. Like, you could play some sieves several different ways. Like, like for Assyria, I mean, before, normally, when you have Siege Tower and only Royal Library, you probably want to get writing as soon as possible. So, like, Tradition seems like a good one where you just... Beeline for it, get it, and get tons of science and snowball from there. 
But now you have two different routes, and I'm not gonna go into detail. You will find out once I play it, which is actually I don't know when the video will come out. Just because I play it doesn't mean it, it will be uploaded immediately. So I don't think. I mean, yes, there are some unique abilities that were changed, but overall, it's not too much. Like, like most of it is just adding two extra components that could change things greatly. If you watch my King Modest series or my Changed Civ series, basically the latest videos, the ones that use the February 17th version, those kind of give you an idea where the playstyle can change drastically. I mean, some of them might still be like focus on one sort of playstyle. For instance, if you have Askia, I mean I mean when you look at it, this gives Tabia is from VP and then they have a Gumi. I haven't played them so I'm actually not sure. But for example their unique units are still I mean now you have a crossbow replacement that actually works very well with the Mandakalu Cavalry which is also in Medieval Era so now like Medieval Era will be a huge spike for Askia. And then of course for Attila you have Horse Archer from Mathematics and you have the Tarkin from Military Theory so you have a huge boost in the Ancient Era. Well, I mean this is from classical, but you get the idea. Early classical, you're gonna be a monster and you'll be quite terrifying. Of course, there are also these other buildings. I mean, I, I haven't played a lot of them and I will probably... I don't have that much time, so I did go through them. Like, I played Morocco and I played uh, Greece. I also played Arabia. And I feel like I'm missing something, but at the moment, I can't recall what it is. There was another Civ I played as. Oh, America, right. So they all, like, they, they add a lot of versatility. The, the only complaint I, I have with this mod, I mean, it, it's not just this mod, it, it kind of goes for, like, just Civ 5 as a whole. It's the uh, late game unique buildings and units. It's just really hard to balance those because they come so late. And, and because they come so late, they actually cause, you know, it's, it's hard to balance. Because for really good players, I'm, I'm, I'm not really good players. So I'm talking about really good players who can play deity on standard speed. Those players, they usually end the game before the late game even begins. Like normally by Industrial Modern, they have already decided, like they have already, like a winner is already de determined. Either it's them or one AI that just snowball out of control. And then, and then of course unique buildings. I mean, it, it takes a while to see an impact. Now, I did include a couple of other minor mods which I'll talk about in the next video in this series and the idea for that one is to add additional sieves so additional custom sieves and one of them has a pretty late building so you know it's kind of hard to gauge whether or not it's good or not and yeah I, I think I covered most of it definitely check it out I mean I've definitely enjoyed third and fourth UD component there are still two fairly major mods I'm waiting for updates. I don't feel like starting a new game and, pl and plus I actually stockpile enough to... I just stockpile enough video to actually last another month from the time this video uploads. Yeah, I, I like stockpiling because sometimes if you get busy and stuff, you just don't have the time. And I would prefer to have content... I know not everybody watches it, but you know it's it's a part of making sure that I have things to provide. 
Anyways, I think that covers most of it. It's definitely very enjoyable. It adds a lot of challenges and stuff, and and it also a lot lets the mod like experiment with a lot of things. So some things you never see in uh, VP, you get to see it. Like for example, if you watch my Ethiopia uh, playthrough on Learning Immortals, uh, there was a unit. When it attacks, it actually decreases the maximum HP of the enemy for two turns. And you can imagine how big that is. <laughs> if you go from 100 to 80 HP. So that adds quite a bit of versatility. And, and they do have a lot of cool uh, promotions that could come up. So overall, it's actually pretty cool. Definitely check it out. And I'm just going to end it here because I don't think I could add much else. I mean, the rest you have to either play yourself or you have to watch me do my playthrough. I would recommend play because, as you can see, it, it takes a while for me to get up-to-date videos. And with the latest happiness change in the beta version, there's going to be a lot of balancing that will need to be involved. Like, right now for third and fourth unique component, a lot of things are just changed to accommodate the happiness, but whether or not their numbers are too high or too low, that remains to be seen. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope you have a good one.